Um, the power. The power. Exactly. I the power. Um, I hope everyone's doing good today. I had a really long drive from the East Coast to here, so I was, I've been in a car for about an hour and 15 minutes. So the power of traffic is definitely not going to be um, Yeah, so it's very kind. I would like to thank you for inviting me to um, spend um, a little time with you guys and share some of what I've written. Uh, I'm basically going to use you guys as guinea pigs because I've written some new stuff and I've never read this out before. So um, here goes. It's actually a series of letters. And this first letter I thought would be um, sort of appropriate to read because uh, I just turned 30 in November. It was a bit horrifying. <laughs> well, I know it's an awful achievement of my own. Uh, it was a bit horrifying. But I, I, it's a strange feeling to transcend that decade. So I was writing a series of letters and a, and a student of mine, an ex-student of mine said, oh, um, could you write to my 45-year-old self? And I said, no, because I have no idea what it's like to be 45. But I did write a letter to him. So this is a letter to my student um, called, his name is Vibhu. Yeah. Dear Vibhu, listen, I just got to this decade myself, so I haven't quite done the whole recce yet, but I do know it's a definite upgrade from the 20s, which you've just reached on the tortured souls bus tour. That's because your power doesn't fit your desires yet. You want to travel the world, but you can't afford to. You want real, true love your soulmate, all that jazz. But you're too afraid to tell the cute individual next to you that their anecdote is less uh, intellectually stimulating than a film starring Taylor Lautner. For fear that they'll leave and you'll be alone. You always want your desk to look like it belongs to Hemingway or Kerouac. And you worry so much about finding yourself that you can't sleep at night because what you think is your soul won't stop having these deep philosophical epileptic raptures. You change your pants about 16 times before you head to a club. Because what if tonight is the night you meet the dark stranger who changes your life and they decide to pass you by because they've noticed your inseam isn't perfect. So as you read this, know that you will spend your 20s chasing your vision of perfect. But I hope you also spend some of them taking your imperfections out for a drink because they are really what will get you through. Also, this is about the only time you will be able to handle a hangover for three consecutive days without <laughs> opening your door and laying out some cookies and milk and a welcome mat for death. Enjoy that. <laughs> Enjoy the chase. The books you are trying to finish reading, the wish lists which will slowly transfer into regrets if you are not careful. Enjoy the breathlessness, the dizzying sense of longing, the panic, the general aura of immortality, the ability to function on three hours of sleep, the glamour you feel at drinking espresso and smoking a cigarette on an empty stomach. Enjoy the smug glow of mouthing Dostoevsky when someone asks you what's the last thing you've read. Enjoy the infinite dance with your hopes and dreams, thinking that it will never happen, in, it will never happen to you, believing that with every choice you make, you are changing the world and yourself. Be true to your imagined vision of awe-inspiring glorious, because one day, 30 will creep up on you and slow it all down. And I know, this sounds like a horror movie to you from where you are, but it's more sublime than the time you had sex against the refrigerator. Oh, it will happen. <laughs> it is more lyrical than any Neruda poem and cooler than Madonna on her blonde ambition tour. It is quick and sweet and painless. Suddenly, you don't need to find yourself. It's caught up and found you. I don't know what happens next, though. But I'm going to find the perfect pair of jeans and head out for some whiskey. And when I get home, maybe I'll write to you about it. 